Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can meet you and together stay in this platform. We ask that you will guide us to the truth and you will help us. You will lead us and you will speak to us and direct us to all the truth. We thank you that you have given your word. We ask that you will guide our life and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's sing our song. Great is the mystery of godliness. Great is the mystery of godliness. And great is the mystery of godliness. For God to be flesh, for God to be justified in the spirit, for God to be seen of the angels, for God to be preached to the Gentiles, for God to be believed on in the world, for God to be received into glory. And great is the mystery of godliness. Great is the mystery of godliness and great is the mystery of godliness for God to become flesh for God to be justified in the spirit for God to be seen of the angels for God to be preached to the Gentiles for God to be believed on in the world, for God to be received into glory, and great is the mystery of godliness. For the last time, great is the mystery of godliness, and great is the mystery of godliness. For God to become flesh, for God to be justified in the spirit, for God to be seen of the angels, for God to be preached to the Gentiles, for God to be believed on in the world. O oh God, to be received into glory, oh, and great is the mystery of godliness. Amen. Every time we are reminded about the greatness of this mystery, and all our salvation is dependent upon it. And this was the equation that God prepared when man fell at the Garden of Eden. And this was the beautiful project that he prepared from eternity and he perfectly executed almost 4,000 4, years after man fell into sin. And then just about 2,000 years ago, God himself came to earth. He became flesh. He didn't become dust. And he offered the precious blood for our salvation. And today we will trace it again. What does all of this thing mean as it pertains to our redemption, our righteousness, our resurrection, our revival, and our being received up into glory? It's a very powerful tool that God has purchased for man to the intent that we can see him face to face and we can be like him. For it is written, as many that has this hope in themselves, purify themselves even as he is pure. For we shall be like him when we see him, we shall be like him. Yes, let's have a recap of the few things that the Holy Spirit revealed to us two weeks ago. Yes, Johanny, do you want us to start? Mm. Yes, as we read from Acts chapter 20 and 27 to 31, that we learned and some things that were in there that Paul didn't shun the the whole whole truth, whole counsel of God. There would have been some some things that it would be more pleasurable and more easy to him to keep some things down that he wouldn't have testified of those things. 
uh, for example, of our, of our, of our this whole thing we looked at, that they need to take heed of themselves and of the flock, which are process, which show process part of Jesus, because e- people will come, grievous will come, and even from their own selves, man will arise. So that wasn't an easy thing to say that, oh, by the way, elders, they are, uh, they are, for example, 50 of you, you are giving the flock, but even from your own self, wolf will come, man will come, and will try to take people to follow them, draw away disciples. And Paul was warning them, even three years, I see it's not to one, every one of the day and night with yes. So it's this is really applicable to us today. It's not that, well, we are reading history and this was at the Ephesus and things. No, this is as for now. The people will rise, perverting the gospel, trying to draw disciples away, putting some kind of soft gospel of you can do and you can do this, but just believe in Jesus or things like that. They are, the way of holiness is not holy because as the Bible says, not undefiled shall not go there. A defiled shall not go there. It's completely holy. So... Oh, it's the same standard is for today. We are not just Dr. Sade was saying last time that it's not that the kings uh, in England that they are keeping on that set of standards for every even a newborn baby, a newborn child goes to the training. What is the training there? What what they standards? What they do? What they don't do? So how much more to us? the children of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So that is what we do. And what, one last thing is that, that comes to my mind now is, as we saw example from Paul, that Peter, the great Paul, Cephas himself named and called and assigned to feed the lambs, feed the sheep and shepherd the sheep. But Jesus Christ himself was now to be blamed and was drawing men after him. And even Barnabas, the Barnabas, the apostle, the right-hand man, the banner, fellow hand working together with Paul, was drawn away by Peter. The rock. But now Paul withstood him to his face because he was to be blamed because he didn't walk according to the truth of the gospel. So now that is also our position right now, right here. If I start to speak perversing, I must be shut up and my, I must be opposed to my face right here, right now, so that the gospel, truth of the gospel will not be perverted. Because if any person is to be blamed, that person needs to be corrected by the word of God, by the truth, so that the flock will be not will not be drawn away and shepherd and scattered. That is what the devil tries to do. And if he can try to do that through Peter, he can try to do that with us. Take to what Jesus said to that this place says to us, take heed, therefore, under yourself first. So this is us and now. This is not history. This is a serious and we take heed of ourselves and of the flock in the name of Jesus. Yes. Thank you very much. That is very true. Sako, do you want to add a few things more? Yes, I think you only had a very good uh, summary. Re- re- recap, yeah. yeah, I just uh, like to mention that there was discussion about a low, low ones of things that we can't uh, be like the people in the world and people in the cult or culture, but we need to uh, be bold enough to correct if uh, somebody is doing living in a church against the word of God. And also if somebody is preaching another gospel, uh, for example, if somebody will come and tell that now we are under the grace and we can do any, anything we like and we don't have to uh, be watchful and uh, that we just float, float around. Uh, that is one example uh, what I can remember. Yes, yes, thank you very much. So we have given a good summary of the apostle was warning night and day for three years. That's quite interesting. And he said he did that with tears. If that was not necessary, why should a man be wasting his tears? Why should he commit himself to such kind of business of just shedding tears unnecessarily if what he was crying for was not important? Acts chapter 20 made us realize that the preservation of the truth of the gospel is so important for the next generation. If everything had been wiped off after Paul has died, we have nothing to read today, right? But thank God that we have the scriptures. Thank God that the truth of the epistles were preserved. Thank God that we have something to look at, which is the perfect law of liberty. And Paul the Apostle was mindful of the very fact that not only will the enemies of the gospel come from outside, but that they will spring up from within. The internal enemy that rises within the church is more deadly than the one that comes outside, come from, comes from outside. For example, nobody could arrest Jesus from outside. If Judas is carried from his side, had to reveal who Jesus is. 
That is what it, that is how deadly it is that led to the crucifixion of Jesus. So the enemy within is worse than the enemy outside. That is somebody turning against Christ from within. Those are the people that quench the fire of God, that quench revival. And people that divert believers into ungodliness. Those are people that take many people away from the kingdom. Many times Paul the Apostle reminds us even of the things that happen at his own time. Reminds us of things that happen even in the Old Testament. Talk about the Jambres, James and Jambres that withstood Moses. They were all in the palace. They knew Moses together. Probably they grew up with Moses. And now Moses had a commission to come and lead the people of God out of the kingdom of, 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 of darkness as Egypt, the house of bondage. But there were some Jambres that were withstanding Moses because they knew him. They understood him. But one thing they didn't know is that Moses is now different. Moses had an encounter with God at the bunny bush. So they thought they were relating to the same Moses that they used to know. But they were surprised when the rod of Moses swallowed up all their rod. James and Jambres withstood Moses. Paul the Apostle had to make reference to that. Not only that, Paul the Apostle talked about a case in which some people began to talk about the resurrection of Jesus had already taken place. That is, the rapture had already taken place. That is, Jesus had already come the second time. And Paul the Apostle made us realize that that was sufficient to overthrow the faith of some. As at 2,000 years ago, which makes us realize that this matter that made Paul cry for three years, warning believers about the likelihood that somebody may divert us from righteousness is very real. As it was real 2,000 years ago, so it is in our generation at this time. Nothing has changed. In fact, it has gotten worse. Because now information is accessible in every corner, anywhere you turn to. At that time, people were only dependent on what somebody writes or what oral words of tradition. So or you go to the city center where you see the jury, people who are custodians of the law speaks. But now you don't need to go anywhere. Information is right at your fingertip. And many are being deceived. So Paul the Apostle was warning and saying of your own self, shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw disciples after them, to draw disciples after them. Very important. Not only will people want to say perverse things, but that they are determined to make people to miss heaven. Who are those people working for? They are working for their own bellies. Yes, they are not working for Christ. They are drawing disciples after them. But one key thing that we have mentioned again and again just in this this session that we're having today is the concept of truth. The concept of truth. The entire mystery of godliness is the truth of the gospel. Let's trace it again. We, we mentioned it last week, but we didn't dwell on it. Let's remember that the mystery of godliness says without controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness. God became flesh and dwelt amongst us. John chapter 1 says that. He was justified in the spirit. God was made flesh. He was seen of angels. And then he was preached unto the Gentiles and believed on and received on into glory. That is the component we are looking at. Those six pillars, they are the, they are the pillars upon which the entire truth of the gospel is based. So if somebody asks you to define the gospel, the gospel is simply 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 15. How God became flesh. How God was justified in the spirit. How God was seen of the angel. That is the gospel. And for that reason, there was something to preach to the Gentiles. There was something for the Gentiles to believe upon. So that is, there is an information the Gentiles had to hear that made the Gentiles to turn from darkness to the living God. And that is sufficient to receive God back to glory and also to turn many sons into glory. That is truth. But the question is, how do we relate to that? What are the things we need to understand about the concept of truth? So we trace it a little bit. Well, let's read again. Sacro Apostle, last week we read Galatians chapter 2. When Paul the Apostle was rebooking Peter, Paul made a statement when he was writing down this episode. Galatians chapter 2 verse 14. Paul made a statement and we want to 
dwell on some of the things he mentioned. Galatians 2, verse 14, circle. But when I saw a table not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the you choose, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? Thank you. So where we are focusing on here is this. And when I saw that they walk not uprightly according Deem to the truth of the gospel. You know, it probably might have been so simple for what the apostle to write when I saw that they were not working according to the gospel, right? But he said, according to the truth of the gospel. What does that tell us? It means there's a possibility to have a gospel and yet there's no truth in it. There's a possibility to have a gospel and yet there's no truth in it. So the question is, what is the truth of the gospel? If the gospel is summarized by the mystery of godliness. What is the truth there? The truth is important because that is what is going to save the souls of men. Here Paul, here Paul said, when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, then Paul had to intervene. This is very important. So let's begin to trace because Paul also makes us realize that there can be another gospel. Let's read Galatians chapter 1. Johannes Apostle Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 to 8 or 6 to 9. You see, Paul was mentioning something else again here. Yeah. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. Thank you very much. Do we see here that Paul the Apostle was talking about another gospel? Here Paul is emphasizing again in every verse. He said, someone brings you out of the grace of Christ. Let's keep that also at the back of our mind, the grace of Christ. Remember, but our focus today is not grace. Our focus today is truth, the truth of the gospel. The grace and truth, they always go together. Okay, not for today. That's another day. But we're looking, focusing on truth today. But look at what how he presented in chapter 1 of Galatians verse 6. He said, I marvel that you are so soon removed. Somebody divert your attention. Somebody causes a migration away from him who had called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. So there is always a parallel gospel alongside the truth of the gospel. There is always a parallel gospel running alongside the truth of the gospel. That gospel can encompass a lot of things. And many people already move moved into that gospel because they hear the terminology gospel. They don't pay attention to seek if there is truth here or if it is a gospel that is false. Or the apostle also continued. He said, there be some that trouble you that will do what? That will pervert the gospel of Christ. So the gospel of Christ is the truth. The gospel of grace is the truth. Is the true gospel. But there is a perverted gospel. There is another gospel. What the apostle said, even if an angel preach another gospel to you, that means another gospel is preachable. Another gospel can be a new doctrine. For example, the doctrine whereby the gays marry each other in the church. It is another gospel. They are preaching to us another form of marriage. The Bible says in the beginning, he made them male and female. When this one is preached on the altar that desecrates the covenant of scriptures, that is another gospel, it is also preachable. Here Paul tells us which is not another. Remember, he had to warn us won the church for three days, three years, night and day, about the truth of the gospel. He said, feed the flock of God, not with baby milk, not with false gospel, not with perverted gospel, not with a gospel that is not true, not, is a, not with a gospel that does not have grace, not a gospel with only five pillars of the mystery of godliness. It has to be six. God has to become flesh. 
So when somebody tells us he doesn't believe in the Holy Spirit because it's already passed, that is a gospel that is not complete. The kingdom of Christ, the settlement of the gospel cannot be complete by deleting the Holy Ghost from it because how will God become flesh without the Holy Spirit? He said the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. The power of the highest will come upon you. That holy thing that shall be that shall be inside of you shall be called the Son of God. That is that is the Holy Spirit was part of, of the of the institution of the mystery of godliness we can't remove him before or after it is by the holy spirit that we are raptured up into glory when the holy spirit is taken away from the gospel when the when the wonders of the holy spirit the baptism of the holy spirit the move of the holy spirit is deleted in any generation that gospel becomes perverted also when we begin to add other things other elements to salvation such as we have to burn incense, we have to travel to Jerusalem, we have to take a holy consecration, holy sacrament, we have to pray to Virgin Mary, we have to pray, you have to worship an image, we have to genuflate to an image, we have to pray through certain saints. Those are additions to the gospel. They are also preachable. But the question is, are they perverted? Yes, of course. Are they the truth? No. But they still contain the element of the gospel. In one way or the other, they still mention Jesus. They still talk about the belief of the Virgin Mary, right? They still talk about the belief of the blood of Jesus. But inside these things, we see there are elements of perversion, which means if Paul the Apostle were to be alive today, he would say again the same thing. He said, if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel than that which we have preached, let him be accursed. And he followed through on that when he went into chapter to and he observed that Peter was not walking uprightly according to the truth that is in the gospel. A old Peter, he had to redeem Peter from the curse that he has placed here because Peter was already demonstrating a gospel that is under the curse of chapter one. And Paul had to bring Peter and we stand him to his face and say, brother, you can't do this because I've already placed a curse in chapter one that if anybody begins to pervert the gospel of Christ, if it's also an angel, let him be a curse. Interestingly, anybody under the surface of the heaven is that is still determined to pervert the gospel, even though they are alive, they are walking under the curse of Paul the Apostle because the curse is still valid. Any gospel, any perversion, any false, any falsehood that tries to sell to us the same mystery of godliness with an incomplete pillar. People say, well, there's no need to preach. Salvation is of the mind. Religion is in the heart. You don't need to talk about Jesus. And so they are effectively deleting that the Gentiles need to hear the gospel because if they don't hear it, they cannot believe. How will they hear except somebody preach to them? And in our doctrine, in a certain church, we say, oh, there's no need to preach to anybody. Religion is personal. My friend, that is a gospel that is incomplete. That is a perverted gospel. That is not a, the truth that is in the gospel. What the apostle said, I said before, so see I now again, it's quite serious. Paul continued to emphasize this. He said, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that he have received, let him be accursed. So remember, false gospel is preachable. It is also, it is also called a gospel, but we must painstakingly seek the truth in every gospel. That the Berean Christian, after Paul the Apostle was preached to them, the Bible says they went back, they were more noble than the church in, in, in Thessalonica, in that they went back and searched the scriptures. If the things that Paul the Apostle said were true, very important, if the things that Paul the Apostle said were true, it is quite important today at this time, much more than ever before, to always seek the truth that is in the gospel. Now, our focus tonight is the truth of the mystery of godliness, the comprehensive truth in the mystery of godliness. Let us not accept five over six, four over six, three over six, two over six, or one over six. 
of these pillars because the truth has to be comprehensive. And we will see that when Jesus is being described, the fullness of truth is part of his description. John chapter 1, John chapter 1, you are near post read, verse 14. Introduction of the mystery of godliness. When God began to talk about this thing, look at John chapter 1, verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwell among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Do we see that? Paul the Apostle said, sorry, John was writing. John wrote, the word was made flesh. And that is the mystery of God. That is pillar number one. And God became flesh. He didn't say, and the word became human. It's not, it's not correct. It has to be the word became flesh. Why? Because there are there is a celestial flesh, and there is a terrestrial flesh. There is a flesh of the heavenly, there is a flesh of the earthly. But this is not where we are going today. He said, he be, we beheld his glory. It's part of the mystery of God. And there's a glory about it. The glory of the only begotten of the Father. Look at who now. This is where we are going. Full of grace and truth. Did he say manageable truth and grace? Did he say partial grace and truth? He said full of of grace and truth. The truth has to be full. The truth has to be comprehensive. The truth has to be total. Any gospel that deletes everything that Jesus represents and everything that he has done, everything that con constitutes the salvation of humanity, that gospel is not full. It should be rejected because Christ, the initiator of the mystery of godliness, he is the God that became flesh. That Christ came with full truth, not partial truth. And that was why Paul the Apostle was writing to Peter. He said, when I saw that Paul, that Peter was not walking uprightly, he was walking though, but not uprightly. Maybe crawling a little bit. Maybe staggering a little bit. Paul the Apostle realized that there was a negotiation of, for the fullness of truth. And so he had to step in. That means we must not accommodate 95% of truth. We must not accommodate 78% of truth. Here the Bible tells us when that word became flesh, he dwelt amongst us. Absolute truth. Absolute truth. He dwelt amongst us. So what we are saying remains the same. He actually became flesh. In fact, the flesh was so was so similar to our flesh that they could not differentiate between Peter and Jesus. People that wanted to arrest him need somebody who will become Compromise internally, like Judas Iscariot, to be able to identify who Jesus is. So actually, he became flesh that could dwell among us. And we cannot even say if this is a flesh that is heavenly or supernatural. But the demons know. Because any time he shows up, the demons will be screaming, why have you come to torment us before time? They know him. Man didn't know him. Man was relating to him as if he was particularly born by Joseph. Mm -hmm. But he knew that this man was full of truth and grace, flesh, though, but the constituent of him was full of grace and truth. He could deliver his body for our, for our, for our salvation. His blood was shed for our redemption. He could offer everything on the cross of Calvary, full of grace and truth. It was a full package that went to the cross, not partial flesh. The full package of the Godhead went to the cross. That flesh was broken for us. Isn't that what he said? This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The full bread was broken. No unliving bread, no, no yeast attached to his, to his flesh. You know, the Bible says that a living, leavened the whole lump, right? When you put in a yeast into a flower, what happens? It has an effect on the whole flower. So when a dust attached to the flesh of Jesus, it compromises the beauty of his righteousness, of his, holy, his, his holiness. That holy thing, that precious blood of the lamb cannot be defied by any corruption. Hence, the full truth is that the Jesus that hung upon a tree was the celestial flesh, the glorious flesh, the heavenly flesh that does not die. Yet, God had to kill that flesh on the cross. 
Meanwhile, that flesh was not was not under the judgment of sin, but that flesh had to take away the sin of the whole world. Hence, John will say, this is the lamb that taketh away the sin of the world. That flesh was comprehensive to take away every form of sin in the world. Here, can you imagine that the Bible tells us that this world that became flesh was full of grace? and truth was full of grace that that was not a mistake it was written comprehensively for our purpose or to whom the end of the world had come that jesus christ is the fullness of the godhead jesus christ is the fullness of truth his representation on earth is the comprehensive nature of truth and anything that deviates from it is not the gospel even though it is preachable let us seek for that full truth let us try to emphasize that truth let us not have a negotiation about this truth because it is the only thing that guarantees our glory Johanny, you can speak on mm. The package contained grace and truth and to say the truth truth is not easy grace is given grace is in a way free to us we cannot earn it but it is not free in that way that it cost God all that he had so now we can only come to truth people people can only come to truth by accepting it complete and truth is not easy we must the truth won't adjust never but the word of god won't adjust to us make that we make try to make us feel easy by saying that we i don't want to do this maybe where god will change his word no that will never happen to no not any person in now or eternity even at the time when jesus was to be born oh actually he was shown a has been born. Simeon said to Mary, Maria in Luke 2, 34 and 25, and Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Why against? If he would have been saying that God is love, just believe in God, so you won't go to hell. No, that would have been easy gospel. That would have been gospel also. That would have been good news to people. You don't go to hell if you just believe. But he didn't say that all, rising of all and a sign that will, will be spoken and good about it was it's either fall or rising and it's it was shine that shall be spoken against why because that truth when it reveals just as the verse 35 says even to maria yeah a sword shall pierce through thy own soul and that is not pleasant experience when you will be shown when a person will be shown he is iniquity he is rebellion he is wrong and he the truth won't adjust the person needs to adjust or to of the offended because even last time we were spoken something about uh, that to be politically correct is what we are doing today. Just be polite, don't offend anyone. Well, sorry to say, Jesus didn't, didn't accept that. That the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. When thoughts of the innermost being of person will be revealed, and the complete rebellion or wrong, whatever there is, will be revealed, that person would say thank you under if he, uh, if or she is con under the conviction of the Holy Spirit and say, men and brethren, what we need to do, we should do, what we need to do. Je our lovely dear Jesus, our master and our savior, he had some people even at his, his disciples, and he had said to his disciples, unless you deny yourself, take you cross daily and follow me, you cannot serve me, you cannot be my disciples. So these people had made this. But when Jesus, our dearly loved Jesus who died for us, say that I am the bread of life, who doesn't eat my flesh and drink my blood, cannot be saved. Jesus, do we notice? At that discussion, at that explanation, Jesus didn't even try to explain that. He know that it will often be people who won't receive it. He didn't go to, uh, well, don't go, I, I meant this or I meant that. He himself, himself said in John 6 and 61, when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, not unbelievers, not sinners, not Pharisees, when his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? So the gospel is offense to many. And that's why there is this false gospel that isn't offense to many. Just a little bit later, he says, or it said in verse 66, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Do we notice? It wasn't a problem to Jesus as when he went away. He didn't apologize. He didn't adjust. He didn't explain even. He said even to the twelve. So, so many, if Jesus had 100 disciples, maybe 80 went away. So even he needed to say to these twelve, will you also go? The gospel, the truth won't adjust. Jesus didn't explain.
it's we that need to adjust. And they, just like Peter, Paul didn't need to try to softly and with kisses and hugs try to say to people, hey, buddy, I think you have made a little air here. Could you adjust and maybe talk to Barnabas about it? Maybe the leaders, or oh, maybe we could together have a small team meeting with these Jesus came and explain that what happened on Cornelius and things like that. No, he, Paul stood him to the face because he was not walking according to the truth of the gospel. And the gospel, Jesus was speaking to disciples. These are not people who who are in complete, complete, in complete total rebellion against God. Those were not sinners, they were disciples. And Jesus was speaking to them this way. And even, because Jesus, this goes even further. This is just a, like a preface what Jesus, what kind of Lord is we have. He loves us with complete love. He actually, he is love, but the love tells the truth. And in fact, he is the truth. Why? Because some truth won't save. It is Jesus completely or none of him. Half Jesus won't save any. Because on John chapter 8, similar kind of thing that he was speaking to people that were said that our disciples all believed in him. On John 8 verse 31, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. So it's completely straight away said about they believed. Okay, let's see what happens then. If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Okay, discussion continues. They were asking me that what, are we not free? Jesus was answering to them, answering to them. Then Jesus started to go really rough, if we would say, it, describe it that way. If you are Abraham's children, you would do his works, in verse 39. But now you seek to kill me, man that has told you the truth, again the truth, which I have heard of God, and did. this did not Abraham did. You do the deeds of your father. Now this time Jesus was going to the really root of the problem. They were going to be, actually, now they were really going to be off comes. You, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceed for God and came from God. May the guy came I of myself, but he sent me. Verse 30, 42. Why do you not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my words? My words. Ye are your father, the, of your father the devil, and the last of your father you will do. Does this sound easy? No, this does offend people. But Jesus brought the truth just if I bring, I have to explain something that is really important us to know, and I try to present this like softly and quietly and just show part of it, so that people would accept it, because I just bring the good parts of it to you. Many maybe will accept it, but when the whole scene and scenario things will be revealed, people will say, no, no, I, I didn't accept it. This, this wasn't what I told. Actually, I will be lying to you because I wouldn't reveal, actually, this is the thing. This is the good part. This is the bad part that you need to adjust. Jesus didn't adjust to show the good and then deceive people to believe. She showed the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Last thing is that in the same Galatians that we read later, when Paul is speaking of such thing that they were going back to law, they have been saved by grace, received the Holy Spirit, miracles, signs and wonders were happening in the midst of them. In chapter 5, Paul is drawing a distinction. In verse 2, he's saying, Behold, I, Paul, so it is his two emphasis, two double emphasis. Behold, now look at this, look what I'm saying to you. I, Paul, say unto you. I, I bring all my authority I, I have as an apostle, Jesus Christ, say, chosen by God, and I have preached you gospel even. You have been gotten by my preaching of the gospel. That if you be a circumstance, Christ shall profit you nothing. So they had good have had Christ in a way, in a formal way, but that gospel would have profited them nothing. Why? They could, the gospel would have been a good tidings, as the gospel is, is it's good tidings to them, that they can fulfill their pleasures and their lust, their pride of who are, we are fulfilling this much. But the true gospel say, is full of grace and truth, he is full of grace and truth, and the true gospel say that we need to turn from our wicked ways completely to the only way, to only name you, which is given unto the man to mankind which can be saved. Verse 7, ye did run well, who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you, a little leave and leave to the whole land. This is also to us, this is not just history we are in, it. this is to us speaking. Are we letting anything to hinder us that we should not obey the truth? It's not a truth, it's the truth, the, the truth. And who is the truth? Jesus is true. Is there anything that he is hindering, not just trying to put us astray, but hindering us? 
from obeying the truth. This persuasion, there's some persuasion coming, but that is not from him that call us. A small leaven, a little leaven, leaven at the whole lump. Let us, let us purge, completely clean ourselves for every leaven that hinder us from obeying the truth. And when that is happening to also others, we are not saying that, well, just a li little bit leaven the here and there, that's no problem. No, we are not going, of course, we are not going with baseball, but then beating the people that uh, repent or repent, repent. It's not like that. But true love, and true love is that we want people, we sincerely want people to be saved. We sincerely want that God's glory be manifested. So we want, and through the kindness of the Holy Spirit, not our fleshly ambitions, that we want that Jesus is glorified, that he is revealed, that we are obeying the truth, that we will bear much fruit and the Father will be glorified. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. That's excellent. We can start from the Galatians 5, 7. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? If there is anything Satan fights, it is the truth in the gospel. If there is anything Satan wants to be manipulated, it is the truth that is in the gospel. Remember, Jesus said, Ye of your father, the devil. He was a murderer from the beginning. He spoke not the truth. He is the father of lies. That was what Jesus was emphasizing in John chapter 8, verse 44. He said, because there is no truth in him. Whenever he speaks, he speaks a lie. He speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Can't come to think of how Jesus could describe the Satan as an entity. Everything that corrupts the truth that is in Christ is from the devil. As Paul was asking in this Galatians chapter 5, Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? This persuasion, this compulsion, this kind of political correctness, this kind of overwhelming pressure is not from him that have called us. Do you know that many times the Bible says as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God, the Holy Ghost leads us in one direction. And then suddenly there is a tremendous pressure from the society, from the world, from friends, from relatives, from spouse, from everything that tries to corrupt us away from the truth that the Holy Spirit has led us to. Jesus said when he comes, what will he do? He will guide us into what? Into all truth when he comes when he comes when he the holy ghost comes he will guide us into all truth this is why christians should not make mistake when the holy ghost comes he has a permanent position obligation responsibility to see to it that he guides us into all truth how is it that believers now enter tragedy confusion lack loss regret of decisions they've made it is simply because something persuaded them away from the truth into lies and it has brought loss disappointment discouragement devastation sorrow pain and confusion somebody has blown a wind to divert away from the truth the truth that is in the gospel very comprehensive the Bible says, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth will set us free. You see that when Satan is negotiating for the truth in our life, he's by the same token negotiating for our freedom. This is the reason why, if you look around, you will see many people attending many churches who have some forms of gospel, and yet the members of the church are not free from sin. They are not free from addiction. They are not free from pollution. They are not free today they are up tomorrow they are down there is no consistency in righteousness they are always anywhere at any time they don't know where they are they are just following religion why because satan has corrupted the truth and in as much as the truth has been corrupted there is no deliverance there is no freedom Show me a man or a people or a gathering where there is freedom from sin, there is liberty from the power of Satan. And I will tell you that is where truth dwells. And not truth partially, but truth comprehensively. The same truth that Paul preached, where he warned for three years and a day, warning with tears. 
That same truth he delivered to the church of Ephesus. And he was telling them, no one must bring up among you to divert and corrupt this truth. The truth, as we have read, as prophesied by Simeon, that this child, as a result of the capabilities inside of him, is going to reveal the thought and the intent of the heart. Do you know Paul the Apostle also wrote about it? Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. Saku, can you help us read? You see, again and again, we are saying the same thing in different ways. Saku Epos read Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Remember, John chapter 1, 14 tells us, and the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. Let's keep in mind, word, flesh, God, they are all together. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-earth gets sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Do we see that? Do we see that? He's talking about the word of God. It's an entity called Jesus. The word that became flesh. So whenever Jesus arrives, anywhere Jesus has the as he made that diagnosis, those guys were saying we are from we are Abraham's seed. Jesus said, No, that's not correct. You don't understand who you are. He said, You are your father is the devil. Do you know that in John chapter 6, we still come back to this Hebrews chapter 4? Remember when Yohan was reading John, John, John chapter 6, and he was talking about many people turn back, and then he told the disciples, Will you also go away? Right? You know, they did rest. Respond. What what did what was their response? They said John chapter six in verse in verse sixty six. He said, "From that time, many of the disciples went back and walked no more with him." Then Jesus said to the twelve, "Will ye also go away?" Right? Then Peter began to say, "To whom shall we go?" Right? Thou hast the word of eternal life. So you see that thou hast the words of eternal life. Peter was able to identify the truth, and that truth is connected to the word of life. What do you know? Look at what Jesus said. Let's read verse 70. Jesus answered them, John chapter 6, verse 70. He said, have not I chosen you to have? What is the last part? And one of you, he said what? He said, devil. Ah, if somebody said that today now, we are going to be crucified, right? This is why we are not free from devils. This is why devils continue to torment us day and night. Devil is always following us everywhere. Jesus told the twelve. The twelve were all complete there. You just listen to the message from the very beginning. He said, have I not chosen 12? And one of you is a devil. They see, truth, Hebrews chapter 4, he said, he is sharper than two edges saw. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joint and marrow. And it's a discerner of the thought and the intent of the heart. Jesus, the truth personified, full of grace and truth, was already giving a diagnosis that out of these twelve shall spring out a devil. He was able to discern it. He was able to tell the heart in fact, when that man began to operate in his, in his capacity as a devil, even the disciples were not aware. And Jesus said to him, whatsoever you want to do, go and do quickly. The Bible says, and Satan entered into Judah. That's what we are talking about. That the truth is a discerner. When we are harmed with the truth that is in the gospel, do you know we can discern the heart of men as a result of the spirit of truth? Johanny Epos read John chapter 16, and then we read verse 13. Very important, important description of this truth. The truth that is in the gospel. John chapter 16. Help us read verse 13. How bad, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you in all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall speak, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Whatsoever he shall hear, he shall hear. Yes. that shall he speak. Our emphasis is on truth. Look at it again. Say, how be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come. The question is, has he come? Absolutely, yes. When he comes, what will he do? He said, he will guide you into how many truths? Is it half truth? Is it 75% truth? How is it that Christians will be saying, well, I don't know. I don't know which one is right, which one is wrong. People have different things. There is no relativity. He will guide you into all truth. When he, the Holy Spirit, is come, yes, the very purpose of the Holy Ghost is not just to come and make us to speak in tongues. 
The primary reason is to come and guide us into all truth. If we have the Holy Spirit and we speak in tongues and we do not have any testimony of how he has guided us into all truth, that kind of Holy Spirit is very, very epileptic and malnourished and impotent. The Bible says when he comes, he will guide us into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. For whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He will show you things to come. That's the Holy Ghost. That is the truth. When he hear the spirit of truth. When he, the spirit of truth, Satan is the father of lies, which implies that is the spirit of lies. In, in fact, in the Old Testament, the spirit of lies left heaven and went into the mouth of more than 400 prophets so as to deceive a king to go to war. Lying spirits. And these lying spirit acts are entering into the churches, corrupting the gospel of Christ. And so you have the Anglican adding this ungodliness iniquity you have the catholics adding this ungodliness that salvation by faith is not enough we have to add works to it we have to labor and do this and do this so as to make our salvation comprehensive we have to do this sacrament we have to pray through mary we have to come for this pilgrimage we, many people are adding and adding and adding corrupting the truth and so the truth is no longer full it's no longer perfect is no longer complete for that reason there is no deliverance from sin the world became flesh and dwelt amongst us and we bear this glory as the glory of the only begotten son full of grace and truth it has to be a full package it has to be the truth not just a truth you know this matter is very serious and thank god for the holy ghost today who is guiding us into all truths you want to hear Paul read John chapter 18. We read an interesting, interesting conversation. John chapter 18. We read verse 37 and verse 38. I therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth <laughs> heareth my voice. Pilate said unto him, What is true? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and said unto them, I find in him no fault at all. We see the powerful revelation here, that the conversation between Christ and Pilate, he said, to this end was I born. He said, Pilate, don't try to manipulate this process. Don't worry. You don't quite understand the mystery of godliness that God became flesh and dwelt amongst us. He said, you don't understand. He said, for this reason was I born. I was born to die. I came into this world to die for man comprehensively. He said, for this purpose was I born. For this cause came I into the world. Do you know? Nobody can consciously say, this is the reason why I came into the world. Because we don't have a decision faculty to make that decision before we were born. We just find ourselves here. For Christ, it was not so. It was a conscious decision between Elohim that Christ had to come to the world. So he had to leave a location and come to another location. It was deliberate. He said, for this cause I came into the world. He knew why he came. That is true. And then he went further. You know, he could have stopped at that. But he went further. He said that I should be a witness unto the truth. Unto what? The truth. Unto what? The truth. There is a truth, brethren. There is a truth of the gospel. The comprehensive understanding of the mystery of godliness has truth attached to it. He said that I should be a witness unto the truth and everyone that is of the truth will hear my voice. Come to think of it. Well, some people will say maybe this is predestination. Well, that is another day's discussion. He said, why will he say and everyone that is of the truth will hear my voice? Every man still has a choice. Every man still has a choice. Even though God knows the end from the very beginning, he choices to make. People have choices to make. So if God says, Jacob, I love Esau, I hate, that doesn't mean that Esau has been 
raised up for perdition. No, he had to make a choice to sell his birthright himself. God didn't tell him to do it. He considered it as not important. God didn't compel him to do that. And so he lost the birthright. So somebody says, well, you are speaking the truth to me, but I find it difficult to believe. Well, that is not correct. The truth has the ability to deliver us. It is a choice not to believe it. Why? We still want to enjoy the cares of this life. We still want to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Moses made a choice. He chose not to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season, even though he was raised up in the palace. He identified himself with the people of God. He made a choice. Here the Bible says, and everyone that is of the truth, heareth my voice. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. And so when you see people fighting against the truth, it is simply because if not heard the voice of the master. When people are agitated about the truth, it is because they have not heard the voice of the master. They don't know him. When people struggle with the truth, why? Because the truth reveals the intent of their heart. The truth reveals the decadence, the pollution, the ungodliness, the bondage, the hardness of their heart. When that rock of offense is revealed by the truth of the gospel, by the sword of the spirit, piercing asunder, dividing the spirit spirit and the soul, and they begin to become uncomfortable. Friends, those people are likely to reject the truth. Why? Because they are looking for another gospel that is so palliative, that calms people down. The emotional gospel, the one that makes you to dance and feel all right. The sauna gospel, right? <laughs> the gospel according to yoga. Hey, Friend, the truth that is in the gospel is much more serious than that. Because for this cause came Christ into the world to show us the gospel. This is why the Bible tells us that the angels are desiring to look into this matter of salvation. The angels don't understand why God will go to this land to, cons to conscribe and prepare and fabricate a truth for mankind because that is the only way of salvation. Do you know, Pilate got the message. When Pilate was to respond, what did he say? And Pilate said, unto him, John chapter 18 verse 38. He said, what is true? Pilate got the message. He said, what is true? One thing Pilate did not know is that truth is not something. Truth is someone. That's what Pilate could not figure out. That's what Pilate could not come to understand. That truth is not an abstract. Truth is actually standing before him. The God that became flesh. Pilate has not, had not read John chapter 1, verse 14, that this man is full of grace and truth. Pilate is asking, what is truth? Pilate had not read John chapter 14, verse 6, where the Bible says, and Jesus said unto him, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man comes to the Father. But pardon me, Pilate had not read that. Pilate had not read that. Pilate had not read that. That here comes the truth of all ages. Here comes the only truth that the world can ever know. Here comes the only master of truth, the fullness of truth residing in one person bodily. Saku Epos read John chapter 1 verse 17. We wish Pilate was able to read this. John chapter 1 verse 17. Saku Epos read. Pilate was asking what is truth. He was seeking what is truth. Saku, are you there? John chapter 1 verse 17. But the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Do we see that? Look at how he said it. He said the law was given by Moses. So that implies that somebody handed something to Moses to give to us, right? So Moses delivered something to us. It was not his own. He was a messenger. So he transported like a DHL courier service. The law of God to the Israelites and to the Gentiles. But look at how he described the other part. He said, but grace and truth came by who? By Jesus. Did he say he, he, he came to give? Did he, is there a concept like that? No. When Jesus arrived, arrived, 
And truth personified was standing before Pilate. And Pilate was still looking for the truth. The whole truth, the embodiment of truth. The masterpiece of truth. Every truth we can ever have on earth is standing right before Pilate. And Pilate is asking, what is truth? What is truth? Friends, we have every truth we can ever imagine. It is part of the mystery of godliness. And let us understand, everything Jesus tells us is true. There is nothing to add. There is nothing to subtract. As Jesus said, anyone that subtract from this world, word, his name will be deleted from the book of life. It is that serious. He is the embodiment of truth. He said when the spirit of truth comes, there is the Holy Ghost that works with him. The Holy Ghost does not think of himself. He listens to the truth and delivers it to us as he's revealing to us today. Can you imagine as we are proving from scriptures that the truth of the gospel is a serious business that makes Paul the apostle to address Peter and say, my friend, thou apostle Peter, you are walking against the truth that is in the gospel. Thou apostle Peter, can we talk to the archbishop of Canterbury like that? Can we talk to the bishop of the Lutheran church like that? Can we tell them that you are not walking according to the truth that is in the gospel? You are not walking uprightly. We must come to that level where we can stand on the behalf of Christ and declare to a generation there is a truth to pursue. He has been delivered unto us. The full package is with us. He is Christ personified. And here comes a man standing before Pilate. And yet Pilate was still looking for something else. What is truth? Johanna, you can speak of. As Paul was asking, what is truth? Every person is looking for the truth. There's not a single person on this planet, nor has been, nor will be, that actually can say, well, they can say, but it's not truthful for them to say that there is no God, because actually they know that if they would say that there is God, true God, only true God, they need to repent for the wicked ways, complete. And because they don't want that, as Jesus was speaking on John chapter 3, let let it pass that they don't come to the light because their deeds are evil and just was and what Andrew was saying, that can we speak to some bishop about the archbishop like Paul was speaking? It's not that we have the gospel, but are we walking according to the truth of the gospel? Because Jesus said on Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Question. Didn't Romans 10 say that who believes in heart that Jesus has been raised from the dead and confesses with his mouth that Jesus is Lord will be saved? Oh, what is this? But this continues. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. James explained this. Faith without works is dead. If a person has the gospel, he says he believes in Jesus, but he doesn't do the will of the Father. He, that person is dead. Not half dead, not 75%, not 25%, completely dead. There is not some dead. On the Revelation, we read of coldness, lukewarmness, and hotness. They looked some part hot, but Jesus vomited out of them his mouth because they are not part of him at the beginning. Because Jesus said here in verse 23, when first these people have explained that haven't we done this and this and this. Jesus said, and then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Debat from me, ye that work iniquity. It's not saying, it's doing the will of our Father. It's not that we try to be so religious, do this and this and this. It's just, he has saved us and we want to yell our whole life to him, to serve him, to glorify him with every atom, with every synapsis we have in our body. It's not that I, I oh, oh no, I need to go to pray. It's such a hard, hard like hard work and, and to pray. Well, I maybe I need to read one chapter today, but I doesn't, it's so dry. That doesn't sound that we love God. That actually, that doesn't sound that we even like God. But if now we don't like to spend time with God, why would we like to go to heaven where everything is about spending time with God? If now our point is to pleasure ourselves and not spend with God, saying maybe chapter a day, or not even that, or hearing some Bible from scriptures, but not going deep, deep, digging ourselves, not praying, and then we want still to go to heaven, where all of all this is the presence of God. That doesn't sound right. That sounds like that we want to go heaven to enjoy the pleasure so that and so that we don't go to hell. That's also service. That is all about me. I want this, but not that I want that God be glorified. I want to spend time with God. I want to worship and praise Him. Because if this, as we are now here, if the point will be only to pleasure ourselves, every person who comes to faith 
should be instantly referred to heaven. There we can worship God much better. There we can enjoy and have peace much better than here. Completely and all together and 100%. Here we are not to pleasure ourselves because he that lives in pleasure is dead already. Here we are to do his will. Here we are to save the souls. Whatever the way is, what is the wisdom, the best method for each of us to save souls, to do his will here. That is why we are here. If every believer, if the purpose being here is to at now worship God or doing things like we all all big in heaven already. We don't need to be here. Now we are doing his will, have saving souls. And the things which we have uh, spoken today, everything we need to apply to ourselves, everything is to ourselves. And it's not that we need to speak hard words to like others. We enjoy speaking these things, what all the springs, because this is our life. If this will be taken away, I would write, I die right now. I would, I don't want to live a second more if Holy Spirit leaves and goes away. If these things are not, someone can kill me right away, I can go to heaven. This doesn't matter at all. Everything is senses. There's nothing more than what the word of God, what Jesus is. Not that there's no any senses, anything there is. But when Jesus was starting to speak those, his disciples in John 6, the, the people say that many people could save today, even what we are speaking now, or even what many truth of the Bible. Many therefore of his disciples, when they he he had heard this say, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? There's not a single thing too hard in the Bible. The hardness is in our hearts, if it's somewhere. That doesn't want to yield, that doesn't want to turn, that doesn't want to bow before under the, un completely under the authority, governing authority of Jesus. As Jesus was saying, and it's recorded so many times in the gospel actually, that they ears are dull. The hearing they don't hear, seeing they don't see. See, Their ears are dull. Their eyes, they have eyes, but they don't see. Their heart is hardened. The saying is not hard. The saying is true. The problem is, is any man's heart hardened? Is your heart hardened? Is my heart hardened? The solution is that let the word of truth, the sword of the spirit, word of God, go through and let us, let our heart yield. Better, it's now better yell than to yell before the throne of God saying that well I did my thing and sa say Lord Lord and Jesus will go away from me you workers of him it's better to do the will of him even that we need to sacrifice her actually that's the best thing to do to sacrifice our own lives to him because if we don't sacrifice our life we are saying my life my way of life is better than you have chosen and prepared for me God I know better that's still rebellion but giving our whole life to serve him completely whatever he likes to do if God says to me Johanny tomorrow go to Taiwan, you will be stoned and turdered to death in one week. That is the best thing for me to do. This life is not, this body is not my, everything is his. If he says that, I will get my things and say to Greta, bye bye, I will go there. If God says to you, to her, come also, that then she can come if she wills. His will is the only way, it's the only true place to every one of us. So let's just test. It may be hard to our flesh. It doesn't matter. Flesh will yield. The spirit gives life. Flesh profited nothing. So we are not, we should be not as those disciples that departed from him. But just like Peter answered, answered to you, Lord, whom shall we go? This shall be, and this should be the yearning of our heart. Who has the words of eternal life? And we believe, and I believe, and are sure that you are that Christ, the son of the living God. Yes, yes. John chapter 3, thank you. Before we pray, John chapter 3, verse 19, 21, Samuel was reading. John chapter 3. Verse 19 to 21. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hated the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds, deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth the truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. You see that whosoever doeth truth comes to the light that is deeds may be manifest because they are rotting God. whosoever doeth true whosoever abide in Christ whosoever walk in the uprightness of the gospel is so bold to declare the whole counsel of God is not afraid of the face of man. He will be hated by all men. Why? Because he continues to reveal the darkness in the heart of men. He continues to spotlight the evil in the actions of men. He continues to point people to repentance and say, let's turn around. Let's turn to the living God. Let's turn from Satan and let's serve the living God. Whosoever doeth truth comes to the light.
But everyone that went evil ate the light, corrupt the gospel, placate men, make men comfortable on the way to hell. There is still a narrow way. It is the way to heaven. Only few find it. That is what we continue to announce. The truth of the gospel is that serious. And we experience that truth in ourselves and we become an ambassador of that truth. Walking in the newness of life. The Bible tells us in that same John chapter 3 verse 34. For he whom God has sent speaks the words of God. That's talking about Jesus. For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. That's why the Bible says it was not by percentage. His truth is not 50%. Full of grace and truth. Because when the law was given by Moses, truth came to us by a person. He didn't come to tell us the truth. He is the truth. That word of God, what God wants us to hear, came in the flesh and came to us to speak to us. The question is, are we going to accept that full truth? Are we also going to negotiate the truth in a measure? Are we going to allow the compromises of our generation to affect the truth that we can deliver to our mankind, to our neighbors, to our colleagues at work? Are we afraid of their faces that we cannot deliver the truth to them? Are we comfortable with their evil, knowing full well that their evil eventually leads them to hell? How much can we stand like Paul the Apostle to reject sin, renounce sin, reprove sin, and even command and instruct believers to walk uprightly according to the truth that is in the gospel? Let us understand, for he whom God has sent speaks the word of God, for God giveth not the spirit unto him by measure. He came to us, and that God became flesh, that word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we bear this glory as the only of the as the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, not partial, but total, complete, comprehensive. An unfortunate pilot was still asking what is true. That should not be our Lord. We have heard the voice of God tonight. A message has been delivered unto us. A truth has been delivered unto us. And the spirit of truth has been delivered unto us to guide us into all truth. Not partial truth, into all truth. Are we ready to accept it? Remember, Jesus said that those who do truth, those who are interested in truth, those who are really seeking for truth, they accept truth. They walk in the light. They make their work manifest. Today, we are going to pray that a transformation will take place in our own life. And we will become an ambassador of full truth. Not partial, not 75%, but a comprehensive truth as it has been delivered unto us. Endlessly content for the faith that was once delivered unto the faith, unto, unto, unto the saint. Let's open our mouth and begin to pray. Say, Lord, I've heard your message. There is a truth that is in the gospel. Let's begin to call upon God and say, Father, I turn to the truth. Jesus told the disciples, will you also go away? <laughs> Are you also going to go away? Are you planning to go away? Is this true? too hard for you. <laughs> Jesus told them, we also go away. Many of his disciples went away. And maybe today they are in hellfire. What a, what a tragedy. There is a way that is narrow. Many we call him Lord, Lord, but he will say, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. What truth do we have? What truth are we holding on to? Is our truth deficient? Are we holding on to the full truth that is in the gospel? Have we rejected the word and seen? Are we making compromises that it really doesn't matter? We can manipulate this, it doesn't matter. We can accept ungodliness, it doesn't matter. We can compromise a little, it doesn't matter. Have we destroyed? Every falsehood out of our life. Here comes the clarion call tonight. How we are masking up God is looking for those that will be led by the Holy Ghost. He said, When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide us into our truth. 
Spirit, let us not end our life like Pilate, seeking for the truth when the truth was standing before him. We have the word of God. Remember, the rich man was crying in hell and he says, send Lazarus to my brethren that they may not come here. They told him they have the prophets, let them hear. <laughs> and the Holy Ghost has opened the mind of Christ unto us tonight. And there is a truth that is in the gospel. Are we ready to turn to this truth comprehensively? Are we ready to walk in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free that we may not be entangled again in the yoke of bondage? And ye shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. When Jesus speaks about the truth, he speaks about our deliverance. He delivered us from the powers of the flesh. He delivered us from the power of sin. He delivered us from the power of Satan. This truth is sufficient to keep us holy. This truth is sufficient to take us to glory. And the world became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we beheld his glory as of the glory of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth as many who are willing to walk in the truth must be responsible to take up the challenge. Are we going to be afraid of the faces of people and not declare the whole counsel of God? Are we going to be looking for political correctness? Are we going to be looking to pacify people, inclusion and diversity? When it comes to the matter of the truth, there is nothing like inclusion and diversity. There is only one truth and it is comprehensive. It is absolute. There is no relativity but the truth of the gospel. Jesus is the way. It is not yoga. It is not Buddha. It is not Islam. It is not traditional worship. It is not idol worship. It is not Rosicrucian. Jesus is the way. It is not Mormonism. Jesus is the way. It is not Catholicism. It is not Lutheranism. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. It is not Jehovah's Witness. It is Jesus. The way, the truth, and the Lord. We must be able to declare this. Jesus is the way. No man can come to the Father except by him. There is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. There is only one advocate between God and man and his name is Jesus. There is no other truth anywhere whereby we can be saved. We come to this recognition. He has given unto us the same spirit of truth. Let us walk by the same truth. Let us mind the same thing. Let's make a commitment with God. And say, as the disciples stayed with Christ, we will stay with Christ. We will not depart from the living God. The Bible says, and Demas has forsaken all. Have been long the present evil world. What is deceiving us? What is attracting us? The pleasures of this life. What is the enemy dangling before our side that is taking us away from the truth that is in the gospel? Mm. Are we looking for men's approval? Are we looking for the approval of a society? Are we looking for the recognition of men to that intent that we reject the truth that is in the gospel? No. Let us make a great bargain with the gospel of truth. We must walk upright in this generation with the gospel of truth. We must deliver the same truth to the next generation. It is our determination to preserve this gospel and transfer it to the next generation. Let's begin to call upon God. There is a truth we must defend. There is a truth we must transfer. There is a truth we must give to the next generation. It must not die in our time. There is something to give
give to others. It is the fullness of truth. The truth that reveals the thoughts and the intent of the earth. Have we come to the point whereby we hate the gospel of Christ? Have we come to the point where we do not want the truth to reveal our darkness? Is there anything we are hiding and is ungodly? Tonight is the night of repentance. We must turn to the living God. Those who walk in the truth, they walk in light and their deeds are manifest. Those who walk in the truth, they don't have any shadow of darkness in their lives. Those who walk in the truth, there's no hidden besetting sin in their lives. For the apostle said, we are compassed about with so great cloud of witnesses. Let us run the red that is set before us. Let us lay aside every sin that not easily beset. And let us run with patience. The blood of Jesus is still available to transform and wash us completely from every wilderness of the flesh. The apostle tells us, he said, I have been there for these promises, dearly beloved. He was talking to believers. He said, let us cleanse ourselves from the wilderness of the flesh and of the spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of God. It is a clear call. There is an effort to gain and hell to shine. There is a determination for us to pursue the kingdom of righteousness. We must go and declare the truth. Not partial truth. Not politically correct truth. Not truth of inclusivity. Not truth of relativity. The truth of same sex marriage. That is not what we are called. We are called to discern, to reveal the mind of Christ and to discern the thought of man. To deliver the sword of the spirit. To reveal the thoughts and the intent of the earth. To call men back to repentance. To call a generation back to God. We have been called by God and commissioned. How shall they hear except they be said? How shall they hear except somebody preach to them? How will the Gentiles hear except there is a messenger? How will they preach the message except they be said? How beautiful are the feet of those that declare the gospel of Jesus? We are here this time in this generation in Europe. We are here to declare that the truth has not changed. Jesus remains the same yesterday today and forever. The truth has come to us tonight. Are we going to reject it? Are we going to count it as it's not important? There is a truth that is in the gospel and the demand of heaven is so high. We must walk rightly according to the truth that is in the gospel. Everything that is not of the gospel, we must throw it away. It doesn't matter if it was established by a denomination. Every Everything that is not according to the truth of the gospel must be deleted because we want to please him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We must not ask about what we are doing. Jesus spoke the truth in John chapter 6, and many of his disciples wait away from him and the truth is coming to us tonight are we going to go away are we ready to stand with christ peter said you have the word of eternal life to whom shall we go there is this call again are we ready to stay with this truth? are we ready to abide by this truth? there is freedom here there is deliverance here there is salvation here. There is glory here. Because this message of Masakabulabani is the mystery of godliness. It has the power to take us to glory. And God be a flesh and dwell amongst us. And we be here in his glory. Let us not be like pilots still seeking for the 
truth, when the truth has been delivered unto us. After this Bible study, we should not be confused anymore. There is a truth that is in the gospel. There is a truth in the word of God. There is a truth that we need to lay on. There is a truth that is worth dying for. There is a truth that we must give our life unto us. That's who have a left for the pita put a cat in the dress so crack at a libra for the sora. Let's pray for every nation. Let's pray for the body of Christ. A revival of truth will break loose. And men will turn their ears away from fables. Men will turn their ears away from fables. There are too many lies in this generation. There are too many fables everywhere. You are turning to lies. You are turning to Satan. There are all kinds of corrupted gospel now. All kinds of corrupted gospel now. A misappropriation of grace. If you are preaching all kinds of things, you can sin. It doesn't matter. Men and women are producing the word of God. And they are taking the grace of God. I'm making it a gecko pataka nufria sakatana, a merchandise. I'm making the grace of God of non effect as a result of their life, as a result of Kakapon the breaks. Let's call upon the name of the Lord of all. It is time. This truth has come to us tonight. Let's pray for our nations. Let's pray. On the continent of Europe, this truth must return. Many of the issues that were wrote in the New Testament were written to cities in Europe. But now Europe has become godless. Europe has turned to godlessness. The Bible says the nation that forgets God shall be turned to hell. Let's pray that the truth will return to Europe. Europe shall be saved. Europe shall be redeemed. This truth will be in this continent, Europe shall be said that it did the blood of the Lord. Parasikedaya, Azuke de Ripesito, De Karuas Kadisha, De Le Mani Maruara Kalivoya, the grace get with the man, but you the man in your day. Let's call upon God. Europe shall be saved, and the continent shall be saved. The truth of the word of God will come, and there will be great deliverance, great emancipation, liberation show from the power of darkness, bring a man to the truth of the gospel. This is the only way man can be saved. The Bible says there is no salvation in any other. There is no other name given among men whereby we can be saved. When the generation rejects Jesus, there is no salvation. When the generation rejects him who died on the cross, there is no salvation. When the generation rejects Jesus, there is no hope. It is a free ticket to hell. Oh God, rescue our continent. Rescue our nations. Rescue. Let the truth be revealed. Let the truth be unveiled. Let men know the truth. I wish I know the truth. I wish I know the truth. I wish I know the truth. And the truth will set us free. And the barricade alish. Skittles, cut up in the breast, get over the poru coscuta. In the pool, the proskid, a veracity, the chip, the record trap of the crack of Caranta Cragilla. Nana Mandy Medecum make a Migo Mandy Merelitia. There is so trappy, let's say Catinama. Let's begin to break the power of rebellion against the truth. Establish in every Christian institution, every altar, every who is a rebel against the word of God. Let's begin to Smart Let's begin to command a revival of righteousness to bring it happened more than 500 years ago. Martin Luther proclaimed the John shall live by faith, and there was a revival. But now Satan has corrupted that, and it has been turned into fables. A man of loved religion, more than righteous 
Jesus, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost and be shut down. But the generation we arise. Let's begin to pray those that so it yes shall reap joy. You roads shall be saved. And the great revival of the truth of the gospel will sweep across the entire continent of Europe. And it's going to be a massive move of God. And all of these lies will be overthrown. Men and women shall be rescued by the power in the name of Jesus. Salvation. We come to this continent. In Jesus' name, we are suffering the people of salvation. Yes, Lord, we thank you. You will give us clear instruction. You will help us, God, to clean our own lives from all the darkness. And we come to light. Also, we can help utter, pull utter from the darkness to in your light and in your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, that you have spoken to us. Thank you that the spirit of truth speaks only truth and guides to all truth. Thank you, Lord, that even what Pilate said at the end, that I found no fault in him at all. It's not There's no grace on that Jesus says something to us. And we say that, well, I don't do it, but I, this, isn't, this isn't rebellion. Fault isn't in me. No, the fault is in us or Jesus, and the Bible testifies he is true. He, there is no faults any fault in you the fault is every single time and in all the measure in man always god doesn't need to jesus doesn't need to repent that he is the truth man needs to repent and believe the truth god father thank you that you have spoken to us thank you thank you for revealing more a dose more of your truth and thank you that truth has pierced our hearts thoughts and intense discern, discerning. Thank you, Father, because this is your grace revealed to us. Because this we can correct our ways. This is when you turn us so we can turn. And we thank you for it. And Father, if we don't turn right now when the truth is like blasted before our face in full scale, incomplete, without taking away, trying not to show the unpleasant parts, the unhard parts that feel hard to man. Why would we repent and turn when things are bring brought to us with blossoms and with sweet talkings, beguiling and disabled birds? No, we wouldn't do it if we don't turn right now. So, Father, our choice is to turn, to repent from everything they call between us. And not just this moment, this is choice of the whole life. Every time you speak to us to turn, repent from anything, we make the decision right there and right that moment completely to turn to you. We don't want any former religion that has the gospel but doesn't do the gospel. We want to be the doers of the word. And it's possible because you have spoken to us. It's possible because of your word. It's possible because of your spirit. And we thank you for it. And Lord, we know by your word as you work through us you wake others also through us many will be offended yes they will but many will be saved also oh, actually we will be saved well we thank you for it because we want still that all will be saved so we preach the gospel accept it or not because you were persecuted, so we will be persecuted. But also your word was heard, so will our word be heard also. And if they don't accept us, it's not that they don't accept us, they don't accept you. And if they accept, they accept him who has sent us. Father, thank you and all the glory and praise to you. Amen.